Hi everybody, happy Monday. Today is June 8th and we have 65 days until I see you guys again. So we're getting better, not great, but it is better. <laughs> Every day is better. All right, and I wanna thank uh, Madison, Ethan, Edwida, Atalia, Jackson, Mariah, Emilio, and Hilla for joining us today on Zoom. So hopefully I'll see more and more, more, and more kids on Wednesday. Um, we are continuing with The Enormous Egg by Oliver Butterworth. And their hen, if you remember, laid an enormous egg on Friday when I first read this. And of course, that's the hen sitting on the egg. It's rather large. Chapter two, it doesn't have, these chapters don't have titles, but chapter two. Taking care of that egg was an awful chore. The trouble was that the thing was so big that the poor hen couldn't handle it. You see, when a hen sits on her eggs, she keeps turning them over every now and then, so they'll get warmed evenly all around. I guess everyone must know that anyway, but Pop says when you're writing something, you can't take anything for granted because you never know who might read it. So if I start explaining something you know about already, just skip that part and go on. I love it. This is the way the kid's talking. And so um, if you don't know much about chickens, I don't then we can learn some more information in the book. So I like that he's adding more information. I suppose there might be somebody who lived in a city all his life and he wouldn't know too much about a hen or how a hen takes care of her eggs and things like that. So I guess I better take Pop's advice and explain things as I go along. He must know what he's talking about, what with the newspaper and all. So I'm gonna show you a picture of how big this egg is compared to the hen, can you see? It's almost the same exact size as her body. Holy cow. That's huge. Well, this hen couldn't budge that big egg, so I had to come in three or four times a day and turn it over for her. I piled the straw up good around it to help keep it warm, and between the two of us, we managed pretty well in the daytime, but it kept me kind of busy. Luckily, school was over by this time, or I don't think I could have done it. As it was, it cut into my fishing something terrible. I'd no sooner get out on Loon Lake in the rowboat and throw back a couple of sunfish that got caught by mistake when it would be time to cut back home and turn over that egg. And the hen would get fidgety if I stayed away too long. I guess she expected me to be right on time. I was afraid for a while that she wasn't going to stay on the job, but she did, so, so did I. <laughs> I didn't know what to do about nighttime because mom said, she didn't want me getting up in the middle of the night, and Pop agreed with her. They figured it might interfere with my sleep, and maybe they were right, but I would have done it anyway. I would have done almost anything to have that egg hatch out. You don't have a chance like that every day. Anyway, Pop said he'd turn the egg over before he went to bed at night, and if I turned it over the first thing in the morning, then we would leave the rest up to fate. I don't know what he meant by fate exactly because one night I had poison ivy on my leg and I couldn't sleep very well. So I got up and I went out to the farm, the hen house to turn the egg since I was awake anyway. And who should I meet coming out of the hen house? Who do you think he saw? Pop. <laughs> he kind of coughed <clears throat> in an embarrassed way and said he couldn't get to sleep because it was so hot. So he'd just come out to see that everything was all right. I noticed it was 3 a.m. by the clock in the kitchen. So there's his dad and there's Nate. <laughs> so maybe his dad's trying to do a little helping out too. Mm, I don't know. I asked him at breakfast if he had been getting up every night like that. Pop poked around in the cereal bowl as if he had found a button or something. <laughs> I love that expression. And he said he wouldn't lose his sleep over any egg no matter how big it was. It was only when he was awake anyway that he went out to the, far, the hen house, he said. Mom smiled a little at the corners of her mouth as if she thought Pop was pretty funny, but she didn't say anything. Well, I really had my hands full. First thing in the morning, I would tear out to the hen coop and turn over the egg. By now, we had the nest all fixed up in a corner of the hen house, fenced off, so it was nice and private. I would give the hen some scratch feed and fill her water pan. Then, on the way back to the house, I would take an armful of stove wood from the shed, and by that time, it would be late enough so I could bring old Ezekiel up from the cellar and put him in the chicken yard. 
After that, I was supposed to milk the goat, but Cynthia said she'd do that for me since the big egg was such a lot of trouble. That was pretty nice of her, I'll have to admit, because she doesn't like milking too much. After breakfast, Cynthia would help Mom in the kitchen, and I would go down to the print shop with Pop. If it was newspaper day, I would help Mr. Simmons wrap up papers for mailing, and then I would deliver papers around town on my bike. Hmm, reminds me of Henry Huggins, right? Other days, I might sweep up slugs of type lying around on the floor and melt them down to the iron or in the iron pot. So I'm not sure they were using little pieces of iron um, in the printing process. And I guess these little pieces that fall on the floor are called slugs, not like the slimy slug, like the, sh the snail without a shell, not that. Afterwards, I would pick up Joe Champigny, who lives across the street from us, and we would go down to Loon Lake fishing. But every few hours, I would come back and turn over that egg. I wasn't going to take any chances. One morning, about a week later, a man came into the house and wanted to see the egg. He said he was from the newspaper in Laconia, and they wanted to run a story on this big egg that our hen had laid. I took him out to the nest, and he took some pictures, and he asked questions. He poked the egg with his finger, and the hen nipped at him. He wasn't too pleased about that. He went off sucking his finger. A while after that, two men came from the Christian Science Monitor down in Boston. They said they had seen something in the press about a hen that laid an enormous egg in freedom, and they wanted to do a piece on it because their paper was always interested in miraculous things like that. They took pictures of the egg and the hen and Ezekiel and one of my sister feeding the chickens, as if she ever did that. They took pictures of the egg. Oh, I already read that, sorry. And they asked all kinds of questions. They wanted to know why we called the rooster Ezekiel and what the circulation of the Freedom Sentinel was and how many people lived in freedom and all sorts of things that didn't have anything to do with the egg. Then they measured the egg with a tape and they weighed it on some hand scales they brought with them. It was 15 inches around the narrow way and it weighed three pounds and a quarter. That's a huge egg. The men stayed to lunch and had two helpings of pie. <laughs> the next week, my Aunt Grace sent us a clipping from the Monitor. That's the newspaper. She lives down in Keene and teaches high school there. The clipping had a big picture of my sister feeding the hens and a really small picture of the egg. Underneath the picture, there was this article. So I'm going to show you it and then I'll read it to you. So here's what the newspaper article looks like. They usually, they run skinny like that. Mammoth Egg Laid in Freedom. Freedom, New Hampshire, June 24th. Freedom, New Hampshire may be a small town, but it sure can produce a big egg. A hen belonging to the Walter Twitchell family of this town recently laid an egg which may turn out to be the largest hen's egg in history. Their hen laid this astonishing egg on June 16th. Mr. Twitchell declared she had shown some signs of uneasiness before laying the remarkable egg, which measure, measures almost a foot and a half around and weighs nearly three and a half pounds. Mr. and Mrs. Twitchell have two children, a girl, Cynthia, age 10, and a boy, Nathan, aged 12. Mr. Twitchell is the owner and editor of the Freedom Sentinel, a country newspaper with a circulation of about 800. That means about 800 people read the newspaper. The family has decided to let the hen sit on the egg in hopes that it will hatch out. Mr. Twitchell admits that he doesn't know what will come out of the egg. Something surprising, Mr. Twitchell guesses. And then that was the end of the article right there. Well, the three weeks were finally up. Oh, that's the time it takes for a hen's egg to hatch out in case you didn't know. But nothing happened. I kept going out to the nest every little while all day long, but nothing doing. Pop went out three times after supper. No luck. I must have looked pretty glum, and Mom said not to worry. Maybe an egg this size needed more time than a regular one. A whole week went by this way, and even Mom didn't seem to have much hope for it anymore. Pop looked really discouraged. I think he'd kind of set his heart on that egg hatching out, almost as much as I had. One evening, after a whole month had gone by, he looked at me for a while with his face kind of screwed up. Nate, he said, you counted on that egg hatching out, didn't you? I said, yes, I had. 
and you've worked really hard all, all this time taking care of that egg and feel, feeding the hen especially, and now it almost looks as if you wouldn't have anything to show for your pains, doesn't it? I nodded, but I didn't say anything. He walked over to me and put his hand on my shoulder. Well, Nate, I guess we have to expect a certain amount of hard luck every now and then, and we just have to take it. After all, it was pretty amazing just to find an egg like that, even if it doesn't hatch out. What are you going to do with it? Mom wanted to know. Well, it's not fresh anymore, Pop said. I suppose we might give it to a museum. They could preserve it somehow and put a card on it saying it was the gift of Nathan Twitchell of Freedom New... Ah, ah, I don't want to give it to a museum yet, I said. I want to be sure about it first. It might be a five-week egg. You never can tell about something like this. It's not like an ordinary egg. Well, how long are you going to wait, Cynthia said. Are you just going to go on taking care of that old egg all summer? Remember, Pop said he was going to take his camping up in Franconia Notch this sometime this summer. Pop sat down on the sofa and stretched out his legs. Now, Nate, he said, you deserve a lot of credit for keeping at this thing the way you have. Just... Don't try to follow a lost cause farther than it's worth, you know? Oh, no, I said. But I guess I was more disappointed than I let on. Just to myself, I decided I would give that egg one more week. And if nothing happened, then, well, that would be the end of it. And that's the end of our chapter. Mm-hmm. Aren't you just curious what's going to happen? Do you think it's going to hatch out? Should be interesting. Okay. Um, so I enjoy seeing my kids on Zoom this morning. And I'll see you guys tomorrow to read Chapter 3. Find out what happens. Love you guys. Bye.